So uh, welcome to this session on uh, the role of economic evaluation. Uh, the first speaker is uh, Jane Kim. Hi, everyone. Thanks for staying to the afternoon. Um, I'm here to present on the health and economic impact of HPV vaccination in GAVI eligible countries. So as we've heard and summarized today, cervical cancer is among the most common cancers in women worldwide, accounting for nearly 300,000 deaths each year, the vast majority of which occur in developing countries. Um, the GAVI Alliance, which we'll hear about in greater detail later in this session, provides technical assistance and financial support for vaccines um, in the poorest countries, in countries with a per capita gross national income below or equal to uh, roughly 1,500 US dollars. To our knowledge, there are few studies that have assessed the value of HPV vaccination in countries eligible for GAVI support. Excuse me. Um, so given this tremendous window of opportunity for primary cervical cancer prevention, we have conducted a series of analyses to estimate the avertable health burden and cost effectiveness of HPV vaccination in GAVI countries. Um, and currently there are 57 uh, countries that are eligible for GAVI support. In addition, we've um, conducted a, analyses to explore the cost effectiveness of integrated HPV vaccination and cervical cancer screening programs in select countries where there's available epidemiologic data. We've used a model-based approach, um, leveraging two distinct uh, mathematical modeling types. The first is a population-based model that integrates um, country and or region-specific cancer burden data, as well as demographic data, to estimate the avertable cancer cases and deaths, and also to assess the cost effectiveness of HPV vaccination in each of the 57 GAVI-eligible countries. Um, and the second type of model is an individual-based uh, simulation model that mimics the natural history of cervical cancer in individual women. Um, and the advantage of this type of model is it allows for very detailed uh, evaluation of vaccination and screening strategies. And so we've um, used that to assess primary and secondary prevention in countries where epidemiologic data are available. So to just peek under the hood of this first type of model, this population-based model, um, it tracks multiple birth cohorts of females over time in each of the GAVI countries. Um, scenarios of no vaccination and vaccination are run, are analyzed under various assumptions of vaccine efficacy, coverage, HPV type distribution in cancer cases, as well as country and age-specific cancer incidents. And these um, inputs are then used to generate estimates of reductions of vaccine type cancers. Then we integrate information about country um, specific population age structure, um, birth and death rates, life tables, and assumptions around the ratio of mortality to, to incidence for cervical cancer. And we're able to generate estimates of um, numbers, absolute numbers of cancer cases averted, um, longer term outcomes of uh, reductions in, in the number of cancer deaths that could then ultimately be translated to um, outcomes of years of life saved, as well as disability adjusted life years or dollies averted. The model also um, integrates and incorporates information about the direct medical costs of cancer treatment and um, country specific cancer costs were based on primary or published data where available or they were extrapolated based on um, data from countries that had similar development health indicators, such as GDP, physician density, road density, um, rural, or rural urban split. The vaccine cost was bundled um, as a composite cost per vaccinated girl that was inclusive of three doses, programmatic costs, wastage, wastage and administration, and we varied that cost per vaccinated girl from $5 to $100. Um, we, our analyses were restricted to um, HPV vaccination of adolescent girls, um, roughly the age of 12, to estimate the avertable disease burden and cost effectiveness compared to no intervention. And um, in our base case, we assumed 70% vaccination coverage and full protection against HPV 16, 18 cancers in vaccinated women. 
In sensitivity analysis, we were able to explore assumptions around cancer incidence, mortality, vaccine cost, efficacy, and the discount rate. For those of you who are unfamiliar with how cost effectiveness is defined, um, it's summarized using a composite metric known as the incremental cost effectiveness ratio, which is calculated as the net increase in healthcare cost divided by the net gain and health effect of one strategy versus another. So in our example, um, HPV vaccination versus no vaccination. The um, ratio is expressed as a, as a cost per unit of health gained, so a dollar per disability adjusted life year gained or a quality gained. And strategies with um, cost effectiveness ratios below a willingness to pay threshold may be considered good value for money. And there's a lot of controversy around what's an appropriate cost effectiveness threshold, but one metric that has recently emerged is um, using a country's per capita GDP. So I will use that for when I'm um, referring to my results. Um, and the bottom line is that this ratio is really a measure of value for resources, um, bang for the buck, and it's, re it's used to compare this value across not only cervical cancer interventions, but also other health interventions. So um, under base case assumptions, our model projected that over 1.8 million cases, cervical cancer cases, can be averted over the lifetime of five consecutive birth cohorts um, that are vaccinated with 70% coverage in the GAVI eligible countries, okay, in the 57 countries. And this bar graph shows you the proportion of those um, cases averted by the country's age standardized rate. Um, one of the things that we found interesting was that the majority of cases that were averted actually didn't occur in the, the countries that had the highest incidence rate, but in fact, um, as you can see by the green portion, occurred in countries that had moderate cancer incidence rates, but very large population sizes. So for example, 40% of cancer cases averted um, were projected to occur in India, which has an enormous population. We also looked at these results by WHO classified regions, and um, we were not surprised to find that a substantial proportion of the cases averted would occur in the African region, since um, the majority of countries eligible for GAVI support are in this region. And again, we saw that um, the large proportion of cancers averted in um, the SEER region were really driven by, uh, by India, the inclusion of India. And because there are only, I think, I believe six or so countries um, that are eligible for GAVI support in the SEER region. This scanner plot summarizes the cost effectiveness results. Um, when, we vac when we vary the vaccine cost from $10 per vaccinated girl on the left um, out to $100 per vaccinated girl on the right. And um, each of the dots that you see represents a GAVI eligible country. And we've reported results, um, the cost effectiveness ratio, we actually expressed it as a percent of each country's per capita GDP. This was a way to standardize the results given the different um, GDP values for each country. And just um, that dotted line just is an indication of, again, the per capita GDP threshold for cost effectiveness. So, um, starting from the far left, we see that when the vaccine cost is low at $10 per vaccinated girl, this is implying a, a cost of $2 per dose, that in HPV vaccination in all 57 GAVI eligible countries was found to be cost effective. And in fact, um, in many of the countries, it was found to be cost saving. As we, the cost of the vaccine was increased to the $5 per dose cost, which is being currently offered by Merck to, um, to Gavi, and uh, which implies a, a cost per vaccinated girl of 25, we see that in all but two or three of the countries, HPV vaccination remains cost effective. And then of course, as we increase the vaccine cost, um, we see that co vaccination becomes cost ineffective in more and more countries. Now, irrespective of what the cost effectiveness profile is of this vaccine, 
um, the financial expenditure required for vaccinating even a single birth cohort in all of the GAVI eligible countries at 70% coverage is quite daunting. So at $10 per vaccinated girl, um, that cost would be roughly $200 million. And of course, as we go out to more expensive um, vaccine cost, it could amount to up to $2 billion for $100 per vaccinated girl. This um, graph just summarizes how the cost effectiveness ratio changes or increases as we increase the vaccine cost um, from $10, which is the blue line, up to $100, which is the orange portion. Um, for five GAVI eligible countries that all happen to reside in the Sub-Saharan African region, the, the asterisk that you see indicates um, each country's per capita GDP. And the point that I wanted to make with this graph is that um, there, we, found, we found a lot of variation in the vaccine cost threshold at which HPV vaccination would still be cost effective in that country. So really? Two minutes? Okay. This is four minutes. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, okay. So um, for example, in Nigeria, the, the vaccine cost threshold would be um, up to $100, whereas in Ethiopia, that would be um, you know, just $25 or less. And then what I wanted to show with the green is just that the uh, financial cost for vaccinating is um, really driven by the population size. So Nigeria is you know, 10 times as, as large as um, Chad. Here is just a quick graph showing the um, influence of va different variables on the cost effectiveness ratio. For the um, example of Nigeria, we found that the discounting rate, which is how we um, discount future costs and benefits, as well as the vaccine cost per dose, were the most influential on results. Um, cancer incidence, the ratio, uh, assumed ratio of deaths to cases, as well as cancer costs were less influential. Um, I am going to, given my minimal time, I wanted to just, um, I, I felt remiss to not mention cervical cancer screening, and what I wanted to do is just show you a snapshot um, of some of our, uh, of one re result from our microsimulation model where we calibrated this model to five countries in, in East Africa, all of which are GAVI eligible. The strategies that we evaluated is, is pre-adolescent vaccination, as, and then we looked at also um, screening once per lifetime in adulthood using HPV testing, and then a combined strategy of vaccinating in adolescence and then once in adulthood. And just to summarize the cost effectiveness results, um, we just see that as the, uh, the, the strategy that was considered to be the most cost effective was very influenced by vaccine cost. We see that when the cost per vaccinated girl is $10 or $25, that vaccination alone without screening was most cost effective. I've highlighted that in green in Kenya and Mozambique, but that actually in Tanzania and Uganda, when costs are that low, you can actually combine adult um, screening one time per lifetime with vaccination. However, when the cost per vaccinated girl was increased to $50, um, vaccination was no longer the optimal strategy and screening alone one time per lifetime was found to be cost effective. Inherent in all of model-based analyses, there were a lot of noteworthy limitations. Um, I'm happy to discuss them in the discussion section. But um, we found, even though our goal was to kind of provide, you know, um, broad qualitative themes, we found pretty robustly that HPV vaccination for pre-adolescent girls in GAVI eligible countries has the potential to avert a significant number of cervical cancer cases. In addition, screening in adulthood, um, even once to three times per lifetime, could further enhance benefits. HPV vaccination promises to be very cost effective, especially if costs remain below $50 per vaccinated girl. But in order to be affordable and sustainable, costs may need to be lower. Thank you very much.